Thank you for the introduction, and uh, we'll proceed. So the outline of the presentation is, as you sh see there, it's introduction, and then uh, we're talking about uh, what are the riparian buffers, benefits of these buffers, uh, why precision buffers is needed, and we'll present quickly two case studies of some of these uh, buffers, and then with some conclusions. Uh, Land-based pollutant are identified as the primary threat to Hawaii water resources and its coastal coral reef system. Uh, sediment and pollutant loads from different uh, sources are the major causes of this uh, uh, lower in the water quality. Uh, this pollutant poses uh, a human and ecosystem health risk. Uh, this is um, a, a picture of Hanalei, for instance, during a clear day. Um, However, the case is different uh, during after 11 inches of rain, and thanks to Matt Rosner for uh, giving me this picture. So you can see it's a real problem for certain uh, uh, areas in, in Hawaii. So uh, reducing erosion in land and containing eroded material on site would substantially minimize these negative effects. Riparian buffers uh, were introduced, uh, introduced uh, since the 1960s, uh, as uh, practical conservation management practices to mitigate the impact of agricultural operation on their surrounding environment. Um, this is uh, an example of riparian buffer uh, in the Midwest. Um, buffers are areas of permanent vegetation adjacent to water bodies. So these are the buffers we're talking about. If I can find my mouse. So this, uh, these are the buffer. And they are managed for the purpose of filtering pollutant uh, and runoff uh, uh, or, or, or from runoff or the groundwater. So hopefully, uh, if there is any runoff and sediment coming from the stream, it will be intercepted by these buffer areas and uh, uh, minimize the impact of these buffer on the water quality of the either the stream for this case or the groundwater. What are the benefits of riparian buffers? Uh, numerous studies uh, have shown the effectiveness of riparian buffer in reducing sediment, also pathogens, and nutrient loads in surface and groundwater agricultural watersheds. Uh, reported retention rates of sediments, uh, nitrogen, and phosphorus were as high as 97%, 85%, and 84%, respectively. That doesn't mean that uh, uh, lower uh, levels do exist, too. Um, riparian buffer uh, uh, provide habitat for different organisms. They also reduce surface and water temperature. So, and I think uh, some of the findings of Kai's uh, thesis talked about that um, in WIPA. So uh, also um, they uh, are uh, served as a recreational and also aesthetic uh, purposes also being used for that purpose. Um, there are other benefits for growers also, or farmers, if they uh, decide to go with buffer, uh, riparian buffers. Um, one of them is they can um, be subsidized through the NRCS process. So they, some of them, there is equip money for that, there is whip money, and there are different kinds of um, uh, uh, programs that the NRCS runs uh, to help uh, 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 th th these farms who are using these uh, processes. So um, give you an example of buffer types. This is one type of riparian buffer, which is a band of tree, shrubs, and grasses that border a water body. As the water comes down, uh, either the groundwater or the 
subsurface, I mean, and the surface water, they get a chance to infiltrate and to uh, load their sediments and particles, and well, hopefully the good quality water will uh, end in the stream. There are other types of uh, buffer, uh, they call them vegetative uh, uh, buffer stripe strips, and it's a gentle sloping area of vegetation cover, so as the water comes down, and as you can see, the contouring, intercepting the water and allowing the water to uh, load its uh, content and uh, infiltrate. So uh, how do we design a buffer? Uh, there are different, uh, two approaches in fact. One is the fixed buffer or fixed width buffer around the stream, around the water body. And there, are, uh, there is a, a new and emerging um, ways of handling buffer which is called variable or precision buffer uh, uh, around these streams. This is an example of fixed buffer, uh, the one I showed you earlier, which is basically a, 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 a fixed uh, uh, along the stream. However, there are other areas where you have uh, buffers uh, that if you can look here, you'll see that uh, in the arrows area there are some um, larger areas of uh, riparian buffer. However, here you don't have the trees are absent and so on because the water flow uh, concentrated will be in this area. So you're interested in, sorry, uh, to uh, stop the flow there. There is no need to have the f uh, buffer around the area where you don't expect uh, stream. And that's the base idea. Why do we have to waste uh, between quotation land if it's not gonna uh, perform the, uh, what is intended for? So the question is why variable buffer or precision buffer? Using constant buffers, uh, we are assuming that the riparian area sieve is uniform. So the water flow that going into the stream is uniform across uh, along the stream, which is not the case uh, always. However, according to Dusky and all showed that um, only nine to 18% of the total buffer actually contact uh, runoff water. So basically you're between 10 to 20% of your area of what you're supposed to be buffering your streams are active, the other one are not. So this is the sample uh, representation of such constant buffer which is uh, constant through, uh, along the stream or along the water body. However, um, in reality, especially here in Hawaii, you don't have that constant with the slope you have the uh, flow of water is concentrating according to the elevation into certain areas. These areas are not, will not uh, receive as much as these areas because the flow according to the way uh, 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 the flow is moving there is gonna be concentrated here. Uh, where, 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 let me find my mouse here. So uh, be concentrated here so it will be a waste of having the same width of the, of the buffer here. If you, if you design your buffer based on here, you're gonna have a very a large buffer area, but if you design it according to the flow that is coming here, you're gonna have a thin buffer that is not gonna do the job uh, in area where it is needed. So um, there are some studies that showed that riparian buffers uh, uh, efficiency depends on the slope. And you can see here that uh, if the slope is 8%, you need a buffer of 100 feet. And if the slope is 25%, uh, which you need 150 feet. We cannot afford to do that in Hawaii for many reasons, as you know. One of them is we have more than 25% in many uh, locations and across the watersheds. And at the same time, uh, our land is expensive and we cannot afford to have uh, 150 uh, feet across the buffer. So there is need for a such buffer, variable buffer. And if this is the case for this hypothetical scenario, uh, uh, effective buffer, optimized buffer would look like this, where you have areas of high flow concentration uh, receiving, uh, having a larger buffer and areas where you don't receive much of the flow will be slim because you're not uh, gonna expect uh, flow coming in that way. Uh, this should be done using um, topography, um, using uh, your DEM, using your um, also soil types and um, 
stream locations and farming practices and buffer width and combine all these together to give you the optimum buffer that you need for your given location. Variable buffer or precision buffer, as I said, the, there is a need for them in Hawaii, given the steep slope uh, of our terrain that we have, limited and expensive land that we uh, have also specific vegetation species, and also the availability of the technology um, that uh, we can use to implement uh, such practices. Um, this is an example of Manoa uh, watershed where you can see that uh, slopes goes from almost zero to uh, 900, above 900 meters. And the rainfall also distribution goes substantially from almost uh, uh, less than 10 inches to uh, more than 100 inches uh, in a very few uh, kilometer. So uh, in such environment, you expect that uh, these are simulation from Aragnep showing the uh, spatial distribution of this uh, runoff and, uh, on the left-hand side here and the spatial distribution of the sediment from the watershed. And you can see, you cannot, if, if you have, you go runoff here is uh, going from uh, zero to 70, um, basically uh, several order of magnitude if you go from the lower part of the watershed to the upper part of the watershed it's uh, unfair to use the same constant buffer that will uh, deal with different uh, flow of uh, runoff. The same thing, the load of the sediment is varying from uh, almost none in the bottom of the watershed to uh, the uh, upper part of the watershed. So um, buffer width also is, uh, depends on the use of the buffer for what are you using the buffer. And this is an example of if you are trying to mitigate temperature of the stream. So we were talking about around 30 uh, meters of a buffer. However, if you are looking for a buffer as a, for wildlife habitat, you need uh, much more uh, width than that. So it depends on the use for. So I'm gonna quickly present a couple of case studies that uh, uh, my research program has been involved with. One of them is the effect of width and fencing uh, riparian buffer width and plant types uh, on the performance of riparian buffer. And the second one is the performance of cover crops as a vegetative buffer strips to control water quality at the source. Uh, <clears throat> so the goal of the first project was uh, stream uh, rehabilitation using native uh, riparian plant species as buffer zone to decrease sediment, microbial, decrease uh, stream temperature, and at the same time, evaluate economical viability of these management. Uh, we were, were ambitious in the beginning and we couldn't achieve all these. Uh, this has been conducted in the same site as uh, Guy Rogosta uh, talked about, which is WIPA. And you can see that the type of buffer that exists there, at least at one time, was the hobush. Basically, they are uh, obscuring the uh, flow in the stream. And if you look under the tree there, there is almost nothing can grow. So it's a very uh, potential area for uh, erosion there, you can see that the cows cross the stream and, uh, and so on and so forth. So the idea was to change this invasive species, the hobosh, with the native uh, plants and see the performance of these uh, uh, pl uh, native species as buffer areas. Uh, we bought, I mean, the, the, the site was, uh, um, I mean, removed the invasive species, it was fenced uh, and we, um, uh, had like two uh, types of width replicated three times uh, and we um, also planted some native species and um, these are some of the pictures of the of the taken in that site. Unfortunately we weren't able to uh, fully uh, finish that project because of lack of funding. I'm trying to get some more funding to continue on that project. Uh, the second case study was done here in Honolulu, uh, Oahu, in uh, Wailu Ka Kayaka, Kayaka Wailua watershed. Um, and uh, it's a, uh, it was DA, uh, uh, EPA 319 grant, which basically to evaluate the performance of uh, different uh, plant cover uh, as vegetative buffer to control water contaminant at the source. So this is the location of the site. We, we chose the slopey site where we had uh, four uh, treatments, three were crops, uh, basically uh, one was uh, legume, uh, fixing nitrogen, which is sun hemp, the, the other one was oats, 
and Sudex and uh, uh, fallow treatments. Um, this is uh, the site, uh, as I said, um, uh, was in a silty, in uh, Eva silty clay uh, soil. And this is the design we um, put 55 gallon, uh, what do you call, um, to collect the surface runoff from the, uh, from the treatments. We had high school students involved in, in this process, also with the Farm Bureau here, that John McHugh, he was helping with that. So this is a view of the uh, treatments. Micah, he worked with me and he did his master's degree on this project. Also, another student, uh, he did also uh, his uh, master's on that project too. So the take home message, this is the results of, the, uh, of that, pro of that re research. Basically, we found out that um, if you put any cover on the soil, you substantially reduce uh, sediment from the site by at least three quarters, 75% reduction in the sediment. And um, uh, you can see it from the quality of the water collected, samples collected from those um, uh, bins. So um, th the total dissolved sediment um, obviously shows here that um, was, uh, as I mentioned about the total uh, sediment also what's more importantly was the total dissolved sediment that was dominating was significantly affected by the treatment. As you can see, the fallow here has statistically much more uh, sediment uh, T TDS than uh, any of the other uh, uh, crops. So uh, every um, cover crop or every crop significantly reduced TSS as compared to fallow. What amazes me, the other finding that we find on the subsurface, which basically we found that there is more nitrogen uh, under one of the cover crops than uh, it is under the fallow. And I'm sure you guessed it, what? It's sun hemp. And as I mentioned earlier, sun hemp fixes nitrogen. So some of the nitrogen that was fixed by the plants was available to be leached uh, to the subsurface and ending up in the uh, if, if it has time to end up in the groundwater, or obviously it can also be transported to the surface water. And this is a practical um, uh, that don't use sun hemp as a buffer area in s for uh, streams because it can, yes, it definitely reduces sediments, but at the same time gives you something else that you don't like, which is nitrate. Uh, so the presence, presence of a cover crop reduced the total sediment, suspended sediment on an average by at least 75% compared to the fallow. Sun hemp seems to add m some of the nitrogen it fixes into the soil solution that we collected. Thus, it is not recommended to have it as a riparian buffer species. So in conclusion, we can say that Hawaiian watershed are facing the problem of non-point source pollution, which pose a risk to the human and to the ecosystem. Um, Non-point source pollutants uh, uh, run off into the stream, lakes, and wetlands, and uh, cover crops uh, can reduce nitrate level in the soil and sediment loads in the runoff water. Uh, however, uh, 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 some of them don't. Research is needed on the implementation and performance of precision, uh, uh, precision uh, riparian buffer under Hawaiian conditions, and I'm uh, working on, on that. Um, that's it, and if you have any question, I will be glad to uh, entertain it. Oh, 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 May ho o ha ma u ta le o ka le u a pa ne a pa ne mai pa hai ke ya ma mu e.